Buying a used car? Avoid costly problems by checking a car's history. Get a report instantly by entering the reg on carvertical.com. Welcome back to TGTV and more specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Marshalls Land Rover Cambridge. Today is the day that I collect my brand new Range Rover. Many of you will have seen the video uh, some weeks ago now, where I actually went and previewed the very same car in Solihull at their VIP facility, uh, the Egg or the Cube, I can't actually remember what it's called, but anyway, their VIP handover facility at Solihull. I went and saw the car in factory mode, pre-PDI, pre any form of audit processes. I went and saw the car, that rustled a few jimmies, but today is finally the day I actually collect it from the dealership and drive the car home. We're gonna fire her up, because we didn't in that video. We're gonna go through some of the spec options and some of the features, which again, I didn't do in the video either. So let's go inside then. Let's get the covers off and let's take you round by brand new Range Rover. Now, we do not just have Land Rovers here. Old Defender, new Defender, that's quite cool to see them together. We have also got Jag here as well. I didn't actually come today in the Lister. Honda, very off brand there. I didn't actually come today in the Lister. Uh, that would have actually fitted in quite nicely. We've got some lovely F-types here. It's worth a shout on Marshall's website to see what they've got. They've got loads of bits and bobs. I'm not gonna go into absolutely everything. This isn't an advert, by the way. I've actually paid in full for this. No one gets a discount on Range Rovers, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I've been told anyway. So on this side, we've got Jaguar. And on the other side, we've got Range Rovers. However, we've got some very cool stuff. I'm actually a huge fan of the facelifted F-Type, and they're actually looking pretty reasonable money now as well. They've softened a little bit from new. And for that kind of money, you can get a fairly average-ish 911, or you can get that. Quite chaotic. We've got the I-Pace, which I'm actually a huge fan of. Despite being a Polestar fanboy, I think the I-Pace is some of Jaguar's best work. I really, really do like the I-Pace, uh, and it gets rave reviews for, for very good reason. Very much like that. F-Pace over there. And this is what my Lister is actually based on. This is the facelift variant of the car that my current Lister, which may well be going at some point being replaced by the Range Rover. I'm gonna run the two of them um, for the time being, just for the sake of running two big fat V8 4x4s concurrently. Um, but this is the replacement version. So this is actually the slightly updated version. You can see um, by these slightly more aggressive headlights and inside, a bit of a bugbear of the previous generation, for some people anyway, um, the infotainment, which actually they haven't really improved hugely. I think that's now got the Pivi Pro infotainment in it. Whereas my version doesn't, although I actually don't see an issue with it, but I've heard some people grumbling in my comments about the infotainment on the previous. Actually, is this the facelift? I'm presuming it is. See, it's so hard to tell, I actually don't know. And they actually start at 78 grand, which isn't a huge amount, considering this is uh, Range Rover Sport SVR levels of performance and usability. Uh, great car, very under the radar, these, love them. Anyway though, you are not here to see Jaguars through there. You're not here to see discoveries. We're going through into the rather cool Handover Bay here at Marshalls Cambridge, because inside here is my new Range Rover. She's here. I feel a bit strange, because I have actually seen this car before. I've seen it before. It's not the most well-lit room in the building, but it should be really, really cool when the covers come off. So I don't think I'm gonna waste any more time. I've wasted enough time. We've had several minutes of waffle already. So I think now all we've got time for is to take the covers off. She is then, here is my Range Rover. You last saw it actually with no number plate on it in the uh, VIP kind of preview that I did. So we'll go around the spec again for those that haven't seen that video because I appreciate not everyone watches everything I do, which is quite a sensible idea. We've got, let's see a Range Rover, autobiography. It's the P530 V8 petrol. So it's 530 brake horsepower with a big fat V8 in the front there. 060 is about four and a half seconds. It's actually, I think, a BMW derived engine, although Land Rover will probably tell me off for saying that. We've got 22 inch wheels on it. Again, as I explained in the preview video, uh, I actually had 23s uh, shoveled onto my P400E before 
and I actually are going to probably appreciate the better ride comfort of the uh, 22. So I'm going to be using this as a daily. This isn't a flex. This is literally just going to be uh, kind of my dog car, and I just I'm going to be battering around the Cotswolds. And anyone that's been there will know that the laybys, when you have to squeeze two cars next to each other, those laybys can be uh, international waters. So you no idea what's in them. And actually having low-profile tyres on a sort of two and a half ton car is not always the best idea. Coming around the side then, we've got gloss black accents, uh, the roof, and also this sill line down here as well. New for this new Range Rover is this kind of uh, updated, kind of modern design of the side grills here. Uh, they actually changed that from four down to three or three down to four uh, on the latest versions, and then they've obviously updated it to this. Coming around the car, we've got privacy glass. Privacy glass is something that I absolutely detest in sports cars, supercars, 911s, you name it. Uh, but in 4x4s, I think privacy glass is a very good idea. Although in London now, apparently, people are smashing into cars when they've got privacy glass on the off chance that there's something in there, which is actually quite depressing. Anyway, coming around the back then, you'll notice that there is no private number plate on this car. Reg transfers usually source all my plates, uh, and as many of you will know, avid viewers on the channel will know, I never put a private plate on my daily car. This is my mainly my personal car, so I don't put any branding on it. It's not a business asset, it's literally just a completely personal car with some mild business use on it. So I just have a normal plate on it, um, but yeah, if I was going to, it would be Reg transfers. At the back then, you've got all these silver accents around the car, which I actually really do enjoy, because I do think on the new shape that has all the black parts, particularly at the front here, particularly these uh, accoutrements down here that are all blacked out, it's actually relatively difficult to tell that it's the new one. I think the silver bits around it actually really highlight that you have indeed gone whole hog and got the new one. So here we go then. We've actually got these handles for the first time ever that come out like that. Didn't do that in the uh, preview video because it was in factory mode. Inside the car then, being an autobiography, we've got big fat hi-fi. So I think it's got sort of 26 speakers, 29 speakers. Lots of speakers basically, including in the headrest with noise cancelling, which is absolutely ridiculous. We've also got subwoofers in the back of the seats. All sorts of um, ridiculous, it's basically a nightclub in here. We've also got these black leather seats. We've got massage, heating, cooling, you name it. Something that my previous Range Rover didn't have. And actually, without sounding like a spoiled brat, I actually really did miss not having those things in there. Cooled seats is an absolute key good when you're backing down the motorway and you don't want all the windows open and your aircon on maximum. It's really, really nice to have. Why I didn't go for tan seats, cream seats and nonsense inside, um, I'm gonna get dogs in here. There's gonna be dogs. There's gonna be dogs there, there, probably there. Um, and I plan on expanding the dog family. So there's going to be dogs all over the inside of this car. So it's gone completely black interior in here. We've got piano black finishing as well. Uh, the guys I valet have actually valeted this car unbelievably. There's not a mark on anything. I'm going to feel really bad actually driving this car. It's been prepared unbelievably well by the guys here at Marshalls. Uh, but I valet the guys that have done it. I'm sure you've heard of those guys before. But it's great in here. Absolutely great. We do have a light headliner. Again, I've been told off for that for having a light headliner. I didn't choose the spec on this car, otherwise I probably would have chosen dark up there. On my previous P400E, I did actually um, scuff the headliner with some alloy wheels in the back of the car. Probably not gonna be carting wheels around in this car, but um, that's something to note, but it's all very nicely stitched. It is very good. Also, obviously, underneath here, you've got a sliding panoramic roof, which I'll show uh, maybe in a bit or in another video when I remember. Uh, we've also got this here, which, is also a digital mirror camera thing as well. Last saw that on the new Nissan. That's now not working because the car is turned off. We've got head up display as well here. And I think that's pretty much it. We've got 360 cameras, parking assist, all the kind of nonsense and the updated Pivi Pro Plus or whatever the hell it's called on this display here as well. So let's, let's have a little fire up there and see what's going on. Here she is. Oh, they filled the tank. Wonderful stuff. Good afternoon. You can obviously spec that too. Now, my camera is going a bit funny here. I can assure you the screen's actually fine. So this menu in here, literally you can do whatever you want. And it's kind of haptic control. So when you tap it, you get a little buzz and a little click from the whole screen. Um, so you've got access mode, which is, this is just basically the suspension and the drive down here as well. I mean, you've got all sorts of stuff. Engine start, start, ride height, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. Um, what have we got? I haven't set any of this stuff up yet. 
Um, but this all new interface is mega and I love the haptic feel of touching the screen. Sorry about that line, it's actually not on the screen, it's just uh, my camera playing tricks. I need to set up my Bluetooth and all that kind of stuff. But it's a lot simpler in here than the previous generation. The previous generation had this kind of additional colour screen down here which didn't really do anything. I actually prefer this kind of layout. This is all quite similar up here and we see 40 miles on the clock. Delivery mileage, whoop! And this all new steering wheel design as well. I actually really like this. They can get steering wheels just so, so wrong. But I actually quite like this little kind of um, double double drop down kind of hole bit in here. Very, very cool. Not flat bottom as it shouldn't be in a 4x4. Right, let's jump out then. Obviously, you've got LEDs all around the car, which you can configure to whichever colour you want. Someone has chosen pink or purple for me. I think the only thing to do is, I'm going to get out and I'm going to get one of the guys to start her up and get her out in the daylight. We can hear what it sounds like. Let's fire up then. Sounds meaty. Right, let's get her outside then. Listen to her. Very meaty. What a car. Look at the size of it! I'm gonna come around there. The guy here, down here, is absolutely sick of me, I think. He's had enough of me. Very cool to have her out in the light. That! And as dailies go, I don't care what you say, that is the best thing on four wheels. Some of you have experienced Range Rovers before and get it, but some of you that haven't, I saw a lot of comments in my last video about this particular car, about Range Rovers, saying, what are you on about? Why are you so excited? Why do you care so much about Range Rovers? If you know, you know, and if you don't, try one of these out and I guarantee you'll never be able to live without one of these cars. That's probably a little bit strong. It's just unbelievable. What a piece of kit. So, a little bit of admin then. I'm going to be fitting a tracker to this car that will be fitted by the guys at ineedatracker.com. If you want a tracker, say hello, say hello from me, say we're mates and they'll sort you out, but they're the best in the business and they won't put a kind of a phony little tracker in it that doesn't do any good uh, and they'll be putting an immobilizer thing in there as well. So all very good and that'll be going in ASAP. He's absolutely sick of me. Sorry mate. <laughs> A little word of caution, if I'm ever buying a car of you, dodge collection day because I'll run around with a camera like a prat. Around the back of the car then, I just want to show you something very quickly. We'll get this uh, tailgate open, split tailgate, that's what they're known for. Look at this. So the guys at iValley actually sorted this out, but it's actually a chap called Ben who I've just met who left me a little surprise in the boot. Call me simple, but that has made my day. TG in the boot, look at that. Let's press that, close it all up. Shout out to Ben. Cheers for that mate. Legend. So then she's running. I think all that it's time to do now is jump in and take her home. A full first drive video with this car is coming to the channel very, very soon. For now then, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and a huge, huge shout out to Carrie here at Marshalls Cambridge Land Rover for the amazing, amazing service. She's been absolutely fantastic. So if you need a Range Rover, a Land Rover, a Vogue, Velar, Discovery, whatever it is, Get in touch with her because she's absolutely fantastic. Uh, huge, huge hats off to her. And she deserves a medal for putting up with me because I'm an absolute nuisance. The black car that you saw me all specking up is coming from this place as well. And that'll be coming towards the end of the year. The custom configuration Range Rovers aren't coming through just yet. It's only launch cars like this. So that car will be coming down the line, at which point this particular car will be coming back to carry and it will be up for sale uh, whenever mine comes through. But that'll probably be by end of the year, I suspect. So there'll be a lot of miles in this car. For now, thank you very much. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you all very, very soon. Bye.